Given the nature of most video recording formats, proper white balance is almost more critical when you start talking about video cameras than it is when you're talking about stills. So with that in mind, let's begin our journey into the white balancing capabilities of the EOS R5C by looking at the camera's white balance modes and capabilities as a whole, and then looking at some performance testing that I did with respect to auto white balance. What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. And we are going to be looking at the big picture on the R5C, so what the camera does as a whole, and not necessarily getting into the menu items options yet. That will be for next time. So we're going to be looking at the general capabilities of the R5C when it comes to white balancing. So what modes are on the camera, what color temperatures those modes reflect or uh, correspond to, and what options are available for those modes, if there are any. And then we're going to take a look at some auto white balance performance testing that I did on the R5C to see how well the camera sort of stacks up, at least in a perfect world idealized test situation. So we'll talk about all of those things. Now, of course, while I am talking about the R5C here, all of Canon's EOS cinema cameras use a similar system to what the R5C does. They'll have the same white balance modes, they'll have the same capabilities, etc. So if you happen to have a C70, a C300 Mark III, a C500 Mark II, anything like that, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about here also applies as well. So let's start this off by talking about the white balance modes that are on the cameras, the color temperature ranges that correspond to those, and the iconography that Canon uses to express this to you through the user interface. So like Canon's still cameras, Canon uses icons instead of text to describe what white balance mode you're in. So a little sun for daylight, a little lamp for light bulb, for tungsten, that kind of thing. Now, if you are familiar with Canon's iconography used on their still cameras, well, you'll be right at home here because it's basically all the same thing on the cinema cameras. That said, while they use the same icons to identify modes, they go a step beyond what we have on the Canon still cameras by providing actual color temperature information with each of those modes. So not only does the camera tell you what color temperature mode you're in, daylight, etc., but it tells you what the color temperature and color correction values that the camera is currently set for in that mode. Now, one place or another place, I should say, where the R5C differs from the regular Canon photo cameras is that while it has a ton of information about white balance when you're recording, none of that is available or is available in the media playback menu. So at least none that I've been able to find. So where if you go to image review on your, say, R5, you'll see the white balance mode that that image was shot in on the R5C, that information just isn't there. Now there's some good news and some bad news with this. If you shoot in RAW or MP4, the white balance of it information for what the scene was shot in is available in the metadata for those files. So of course, RAW requires it. It's necessary to reconstruct a proper image. In MP4, it's part of the EXIF metadata information that's stored in the file. However, you'll notice the one format that wasn't there, and that is XFAVC. So arguably the highest quality format in some respects that the R5C can shoot in. And it does not, at least as far as I can tell, provide any information in the metadata about white balance. I've looked in the uh, metadatas for the file. I've also saved the XML metadata file that goes along with it, and I couldn't find white balance information in either of those. So long story short, if you need white balance or need to know what the white balance or color temperature information was when you're shooting in the field, your best solution is going to be to write it down outside of the camera system so that you have it for later if you're needing it for post-production or something like that. So with the iconography and broad capabilities out of the way, let's talk about the white balance modes that are on the R5C. Now there's six of them on the R5C, which if you're used to Canon's photo cameras, you'll remember there's 10 of them on the like R5 and R3 current Canon photo cameras. Six seems like a pretty big step back. Uh, however, Canon actually provides increased capabilities in some respects and 
a way to work around those limitations. So the six modes on the R5C are auto. There are two custom modes, which is a feature that I would really like to have on my R5. There is a daylight mode, a tungsten mode, and a color temperature mode. And that is the extent of it. Now the icons for each of these modes I displayed as I was introducing them. That's what you'll be looking for on the camera for uh, the white balance mode, either on the rear LCD or the top LCD or in the viewfinder when you're working with the camera and switching modes. Now the way Canon gets around the missing modes essentially is giving you the ability to adjust some of the modes that are actually there. So daylight on the R5C by default corresponds to a color temperature of 5200 Kelvin. However, the color temperature can be adjusted from 4300 Kelvin to 8000 Kelvin and the color correction value can be adjusted at plus or minus five color correction units. So that basically takes care of daylight, cloudy, and shade modes on the R5 or the photo cameras, all just by giving you the ability to make some adjustments on the color temperature, the daylight color temperature mode. The other mode that you can make adjustments to that you couldn't on a photo camera is the tungsten mode. So by default, tungsten will be 3200 Kelvin. However, it has a range that it can be set to from between 2700 Kelvin to 3700 Kelvin. Again, with a plus or five, plus or minus five uh, unit color correction adjustment for green and magenta casts. Now that said, the one mode that you won't find on the R5C that you will find in Canon's photo cameras is a flash mode, or I'm sorry, the two modes. So one is flash, the other is fluorescent. And Canon's recommendation if you are shooting under fluorescent lighting is to use one of the custom modes and to set your white balance using an appropriate white target. And that would be my recommendation as well. That's gonna get you the most accurate results. Now, the final big difference between the R5 and the R5C comes to the color temperature mode. On the R5, the color temperature mode is limited to, I believe, if I remember correctly, 2,500 to 10,000 Kelvin. On the R5C, it goes from 2,000 Kelvin all the way to 15,000 Kelvin. And again, you can make adjustments to the green magenta shift or color correction by, in this case, plus or minus 20 adjustment units. So, broadly put, the R5C and the other cinema cameras collapse most, if not all, of the functionality that you find on the photo cameras in their 10 white balances into just six. And on top of that, they add, which is incredibly useful, the ability to have a second custom white balance mode so that you don't have to constantly be resetting your custom white balance. You can know, for example, anytime I shoot in my studio, I'm using the custom white balance B and I will not touch that if I'm out in the field. And that way I always have my studio stuff ready to go. So with those details out of the way, let's talk a little bit about auto white balance and the testing that I did on this. So I had three primary objectives when it came to testing the auto white balance system on the R5C. First of all, I wanted to understand what auto white balance or what range of color temperatures auto white balance was designed to work over or at least worked over well. So on the R5 and Canon's other photo cameras, Canon actually publishes the range that they're designed to work in. That's something that is omitted from the manual on the R5 see so that was a big question of mine second of all i wanted to understand or be sure of the auto white balance priorities so again on canon's photo cameras we now have ambience and white priority now i assume that the r5c's white balance was going to be prioritizing neutrality or white uh, but i wanted to be certain about that as well Finally, I wanted to take at least a stab at understanding the in-camera accuracy of the white balance system. So how well does it do? So with that said, I put the camera through a rather simplistic and somewhat limited battery of tests to try and at least shed a little bit of light on this. The process I used was similar to what I used for the R5. So I set up my Calibrite white balance card in front of the camera, filled the frame with the, uh, the white balance card as a test target. I then lit everything with an Aperture Amran P60C. So this is an RGB white white or WW 
uh, LED fixture capable of generating a wide range of color temperature light, and then shot a series of 27 test points from 2200 Kelvin to 20,000 Kelvin in approximately 15 MyRed increments over that range. I then went back because I wanted to see how the camera responded to green from fluorescent lights and shot another series of six test points from 3400 Kelvin to 4700 Kelvin, which is basically the range that you're most likely to find fluorescent lights operating in, although it goes a little lower than they typically get. With the light, the uh, P60C, set to both plus 0.5 and plus 1 for the green. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the details and ins and outs of every little nuance of the testing and frustrations and limitations of that here. I'm going to just give you the results. However, if you're interested in that kind of thing, I did do a podcast on testing white balance and white balance in general. So you can go check out that podcast. It has a lot of extra information about this, including the limitations. So what's the summary of all of this? Well, the results are, first of all, Auto white balance on the R5C does focus on neutrality, so it's equivalent to white priority on the R5 or Canon's photo cameras. Now, of course, this is pretty much what I expected, but I wanted to be sure. Second of all, I found that the camera performed reasonably well, if not exceptionally well, from about 2700 Kelvin all the way to about 20,000 Kelvin. Now, at the extreme high end, the color errors did start accruing, but the errors were so small that they weren't terribly meaningful in the overall picture. Below 2700 Kelvin, the, the camera certainly did not keep up. Uh, it did start getting warm. It was not, uh, you know, perfect there. So that's a range if you're working in, and even maybe say below 32 or 3000 Kelvin is a range where you're going to probably want to think about using either a custom white balance or uh, using the color temperature mode and setting the color temperature specifically. Now for the green and or fluorescent light tests, I found that the camera did, as long as you did not over green the situation, uh, compensate very well. In fact, with the 0.5 or the plus 0.5 green tests, the camera was almost spot on in both in terms of color temperature and eliminating the green cast. So that was really perfect. Uh, perf uh, really nice to see. Finally, uh, again, I want to reiterate the point. There are a lot of limitations in this whole testing process. White balance is not, or auto white balance is not just as simple as putting a gray card in front of the camera and saying, that's it. Uh, in the real world, there are a lot more situations and scenarios that can ultimately affect the color that the camera uses and the algorithm that the camera uses and how it all determines this stuff. Now, from real world experience, I have, even though Canon and I don't recommend shooting auto white balance, I have shot auto white balance on my R5 in the field in situations where I was shooting video under daylight conditions in normal kind of wilderness situations. And the camera worked fine. Uh, I never had any appreciable problem with white balance in any of those situations. So as a whole, um, Auto white balance is certainly capable. Uh, it's probably not recommended, but it is certainly capable. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this up here. Next time, we're going to come back and look at the menus, the settings, and all of the options that actually affect and control white balance on the R5C. So if you're interested in that, you might want to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when that comes up. In any event, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And finally, if you'd like to directly support this channel and future videos like this, please consider hitting that thanks button. It really does help. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.